Welcome to Vegas Revealed, episode 179, Christmas Lovers Listen Up. An iconic Las Vegas hotel is delivering cheer all year round. We've got the scoop. Plus, an update on renovations happening over at Circus Circus and a hotel casino under construction caught fire recently. An update on what happened. Plus, comedian Theo Vaughn is doing even more Las Vegas shows. And could our city be the next hub for space tourism? And we have a follow-up on the Miranda Lambert backlash. All that and more coming up on Vegas Revealed. Let's spin that wheel. Welcome to Vegas Revealed, episode 179. Sean McAllister here along with Dana Roselli. And you know, we just hit a big milestone here, Dana. I know, 200 days to the Super Bowl. Can you believe it? When you're listening to this podcast, it's under 200 days to the Super Bowl. But even I looked at you and went, that's it? 200 days? And I started like counting. And I was like, gosh, I just am blown away that February's in 200 days. <laughs> I know, like six months away, just about, until, you know, the biggest event in sports is going to be held right here, Super Bowl 58 in Las Vegas. And as we uh, start counting down to the big game, we're getting some very interesting information about what we can expect here in Las Vegas. And you know what's interesting is it's the first time we're getting the Super Bowl, obviously, because our stadium is so new. But boy, we got it pretty quick. We did get it pretty quick. I tell (laughs) you what, Las Vegas has been fighting for this. And... We fought hard and we won. I know. And, you know, we're so many people are saying this is the best place to have a Super Bowl because we have so many other things to do, right? We're the entertainment capital of the world. So it's going to be spectacular. And people that we have talked to have said it will be, believe me. We have things planned. So we don't know exact plans, but we did get some interesting numbers. And we have 150,000 hotel rooms in the Las Vegas area. We looked that up and I was like, I never actually looked that number up before. I thought it yeah. was... And I actually thought it was a little low. It feels like we have more, but 150,000 is a big number. And we have learned that all those hotel rooms are going to be taken up, you know, in multiple room nights. So, I mean, we are going to be sold out, occupied. I mean, if you're planning to come in for the Super Bowl, uh, do it now. And, for sure. And we're it's talking booked. about the entire week leading up to Super Bowl as well, because there's going to be tons of activations, concerts, fan events. Uh, there's going to be a lot of high rollers yeah. coming in, too. Already, 200 days out, we're anticipating 1,600 private jets coming to Las Vegas, delivering those VIP fans. Mm. And then the morning after the Super Bowl, that Monday morning, we're anticipating 100,000 flight departures out of <laughs> Harry Reid International Airport to take all those fans home. Oh, my goodness. It is going to be so busy, but it's going to be wonderful. We are excited about it. Uh, we're less than 200 days out. And I know with that Super Bowl experience, like you said, the week that we're going to have before, we're just going to have, I think, you know, we're going to have the stuff that you would expect if you were going to a Super Bowl. But then I think it's going to be like times 10. <laughs> it is. And uh, on top of, you know, all the fun and excitement, the money part part of it. This entire Super Bowl week is uh, expected to bring in $600 million for Las Vegas in revenue. Um, and uh, coming up in, later in the fall, in the next two or three months or so, we're planning to find out the locations for a lot of these pre-Super Bowl Event. So you want to stay tuned because we're going to stay on top of it. Yeah. Well, speaking of that, we are having we are going to have a new hotel open yeah. at, during the Super Bowl, and that's the Fountain Blue. And we just want to backtrack a little. If you saw our social media, the Fountain Blue, th- there was a fire there recently, just last week. I actually live across the street from it, so I started getting some video. I was like, fingers crossed this does not get bad because it looked bad. It was at the top, lots of black smoke. But we did get an update from the Fountain Blue, and they say, you know what? We are on schedule. The fire was contained quickly. Um, We are, you know, happy to know that, you know, elevators were working, safety systems were working, the fire department was there. Uh, They're still investigating the cause at the time that we're actually recording this podcast, so they don't know exactly what happened there. It was a really hot day. But again, and I must say, when I was watching it, I was like, oh boy, but it was out quick. And so they feel that, you know what, we're still on target and they are hiring right now too. So if you're looking for a job in Vegas, whether you live here and you want to switch jobs or you need a job, maybe you're thinking 
thinking about moving here, check out the Fountain Blue online, and they will be open December of 2023, just in time for the Super Bowl. And that is a big property. So if you are looking for a job, there uh, will be lots of jobs to be had. Um, In other casino news, I know this is kind of long-awaited news, the uh, Circus Circus is uh, getting some renovations. It's actually undergoing renovations right now to the tune of about $25 million. I know. And, you know, I guess I didn't realize that they were currently doing renovations there. I, I, I think it was announced maybe during like 2020, 2021 maybe, and I just forgot about it. So apparently a lot of the renovations are actually already done, but they were talking about the Adventure Dome and some new things that are coming. So if you love rides and you love the Adventure Dome, here's something, a new surprise that's coming soon and it's the spongebob ride sean (laughs) okay it's one it's one it's the only one of its kind on the west coast okay it's a big deal it's set to open in december um and like you said 25 million dollars have gone into renovations but they're working on the elevators next and that probably won't be done till 2024 2025 a whole new uh, system there so that's exciting you know that comes to safety and um they have a lot of different things that they've already implemented i think around the pool um and they have a new garage arcade area that's been built some some mini golf bowling a vr game that allows you to fly and the midway has a few upgrades as well so if you love you some circus circus that's some good news. I do love the front of the Circus Circus, that iconic entrance with all the lights. It, it really is. Yeah. I mean, it's iconic. It hasn't changed a ton over the years. And, I mean, whatever your feelings about Circus Circus, it is always packed. It is always busy. And we love the steakhouse there, so we've said that before. Hey, Theo Vaughn, we talked about this a few podcasts ago. I was telling you, I was talking with some folks over at AEG when I was at the Kevin Hart show, and they were like, Theo Vaughn just sold out, sold out again over at the Encore Theater. And now, guess what? He's coming to Resorts World. We had a feeling that might happen. He's booked two shows in October. Which is a big deal, because coming from the Encore Theater, which is a pretty decent-sized theater, Mm -hmm. but then going over to Resorts World, that is a much larger venue. Right. And the fact that they're moving Theo from Encore over to Resorts World tells you something about his ability to sell tickets. Mm -hmm. And So true. I have a feeling that both of his shows at Resorts <laughs> World are going to sell out. Yeah, I think so. It's October 27th and 28th. Um, and so, you know, they said, like, this, like, tour, um, he's been adding more tour dates because of demand. And so now, you know, he's a, a comedian um, that I have never seen. I've actually never watched any of his stand-up. I need to Google and look because people seem to love him. They think he's super relatable and funny and yeah. just honest. And so, um, yeah, good luck to Theo. And I'm, I'm glad Resorts World got a, got a hold of him. They noticed. They noticed. He's doing well over at Encore. Let's bring him over. They did. They yeah. know what they're doing. Yeah. Hey, a uh, follow-up now to uh, that whole Miranda Lambert situation that really – I mean, everyone in the entertainment world has been talking about uh, since it and happened TikTok. a few weeks ago. And TikTok, all over social media. Um, we talked about it you know, last week where Miranda you know, scolded fans from the stage for taking a selfie during one of her songs. Mm-hmm. Um, and at a recent show, there was another fan that Miranda called out. Right. But for a completely different reason. Yeah. It's because she liked the girl's shirt which said, shoot tequila, not selfies. Right. And then she took some tequila or whatever and shot it on stage yeah. and everyone was laughing. So it's kind of like she addressed it. Um, boy, it's been so, like, I don't know, it's controversial. Everyone has such different thoughts. I've been going back and forth on threads with this woman. <laughs> she feels, you know, these girls were disrespectful. And if they were true Miranda fans, they would know that she doesn't like pictures taken. And it's like, but but what I was defending is the opposite, kind of devil's advocate, but they weren't true, true fans. You don't have to be a true fan to go to a Miranda Lambert Correct. show in Vegas. That's the point of Vegas residency shows. You say, oh, I hear good things about Miranda Lambert. Oh, yeah, I like that one song she does. Let's go see her. And then... 
these women, they bought great tickets up front and thought, let's have a night out. And then they were enjoying themselves and they wanted a picture with Miranda in it. So anyway, I actually met the woman at a self-defense class, the woman who was called out during the show. Right, which is Las hilarious. It's so, I was like, I know that face. <laughs> um, and so I was chatting with Adela and she said, you know, she actually hasn't taken it that hard. You know, she stayed throughout the show. She said she is a little bothered that there were like 7,000 people with their phones in the air yeah. taking video and pictures, and she's the one that got called out. She, she, it, that did bother her. But anyway, she has rubbed, like, just blown it off. And she said, you know what I'm really excited about is Ricky Pitbull. <laughs> <laughs> and Enrique coming to Las Vegas. I've got my tickets. I am up close. My husband said, go ahead and get them. This is a once in a lifetime experience. And she is counting down the days. I mean, that's going to be fun. Fireball. Uh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, if Ricky saw her taking some group picks, he'd get down and shake oh, his bonbon. All three of those guys <laughs> will get right in the video for sure. So that's, I actually looked it up because I was like, I need to get tickets to that. So I looked it up. It's the day, I think, after Thanksgiving. So okay. it'll be a busy, I think, like weekend for tourists that are coming in and taking advantage of their time off. But for locals, a lot of you might be out of town. So FYI, you might need to stay in or get back in time for Ricky, Enrique, and Pitbull. Well, I've seen uh, Pitbull's residency. Me I too. saw Ricky Martin's residency. I've never seen Enrique, but Neither. I know that the two of those guys put on a phenomenal show. I'm sure Enrique does too, because otherwise yeah. they wouldn't have him along. <laughs> right. I know. I know. All right. Let's talk about space tourism, everyone. We've got an interview here coming up. We thought this was really interesting and we think a lot of you will be interested in it too. And we've known that Las Vegas has been a tourist destination for years, for decades, really, for people who want gaming, entertainment, dining, retail, spas. Yeah. But now Las Vegas could be the final stop before the final frontier. Yeah. Listen, Rob Lauer is a developer who plans to build Spaceport Las Vegas. It's going to be a hub for consumer travel. He has ideas and he has plans. So we said we got to dial up Rob. Let's dial up Rob and put him on the line and find out more about this. Hey, Rob, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I'm really excited. So, first of all, I think the first thing that we want to dig into here is why Las Vegas? What makes Las Vegas a great spot for a spaceport? That's a great question. You know, there's 14 spaceports currently licensed in the United States. But the fact is that the majority of them are run by, in fact, all of them right now are run by government, county governments. And, um, and frankly, I've called all of them just doing my background and research. And, and frankly, you know, they're in Mojave. They're in Georgia, um, and we're we're focused on two parts of the industry. One is, um, of course, tourism as a key um, economic driver for space travel in the future, but also for for training and in in satellite um, delivery to space. And so, all those components make you know make Las Vegas the, the perfect location in the country, if not the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, we we bought two hundred forty acres. 15 miles from Las Vegas back in November, and that's 15 miles from 39 million tourists. And these folks, as you know, drop millions of dollars. Some of them individually drop millions of dollars on the hands of poker and so forth. And so we have an amazing location where we can we can sell rides to the edge of space in our fighter jets or zero gravity flights in a Gulfstream or Falcon jet. But we can also draw from Nellis Air Force Base, which we have, some of the best fighter pilots in the entire world to provide training for what I, I believe is the other part of our business model, which is to provide training and human capital. Well, let's just talk for all our listeners that are, are listening to this right now, kind of paint a picture for me of what this is going to be like. Uh, you come to Las Vegas and, mm -hmm. or maybe, maybe you're coming here just for that, but you come to Las Vegas and you can go up to Spaceport Las Vegas and do what? Well, we're not going to be going on rockets and space planes right away. This is a long-term 10-year plan to build a spaceport. And like I said, the initial plan is going to be to provide tourists rides on like an L-39 fighter jet. If you go to our website at lasvegasspaceport.org and click on civilian air uh, space training, you can see a video of what we're going to be offering using an L-39 fighter jet to get the average civilian some civilian space flight acclimation. So we get them some, some ground school. We'll give them a physical, and then they'll be able to go on a natural fighter jet, which will give them high G training, and they'll go to the edge 
you know, very high. And you'll get to simulate space, what it feels like to go up there and what it feels like to, to have G's put on your body. And then we have, we're going to have a Falcon 50 jet um, where you'll be able to go and do zero gravity training like real astronauts. Mm -hmm. And these things will be, you know, generate revenue for a company, but there'll also be an opportunity that we can start doing next year. We don't have to wait on that for a space for a license. The long-term plan is, which is going to take a couple of years, we're working through the, the process with the FAA Department Division of Spaceports to get our license. And we have Dave Rappel, who's on our on our team. He was the former director of the Colorado Spaceport, and he got their license. And he works for us now. So we're getting our license. But here's the really, I think, the critical part, and that is um, we're planning to build a casino out there, a runaway, a facility for, for launching uh, vehicles to space. And, and so right now there's a capacity crisis because of Elon Musk and SpaceX in Cape Canaveral. There's over, they're launching literally a rocket a week in wow. Cape Canaveral. Um, yeah, is think about that, right? Mm -hmm. People are going up every week in Cape Canaveral, but that means for the next several years, there's, he's monopolized that, honestly. And, and, and his focus has been on large, these large Falcon rockets and large capacity. Well, there's over 100,000 satellites that are on the books to go up to space in the next 10 years, small ones, 500-pound, 1,000-pound satellites. They have nowhere to go right now. So we believe we could be a great um, facility to provide capacity to provide um, vehicles to space. And, and again, they may not be rockets in the traditional way going up, but we think there's going to be space planes that we are talking to companies right now building them today. That'll be able to take off and land like an airplane and bring people and cargo to space for a fraction of the price that the government and even even Elon Musk's rockets do. I mean, in in having a, a casino out there in conjunction with the spaceport, do you envision having kind of entertainment opportunities for people who aren't able to afford a thirty thousand dollar ticket? on a, a space plane? Will there be entertainment options that will simulate the experience that they could get if they could afford that, that flight? Well, we're offering for $6,500 starting next year, a ride on a fighter jet to the edge of space. So that's a far more affordable cost than, than 30,000. Yeah. Well, this technology is expensive. It's not going to be something that people can spend a couple hundred dollars for. But what I like to tell people is this. You know, in 1960, Boeing came out with the 707. It was the very first um, passenger jet airline in the world. Imagine that. In our parents' history, there was nothing like that before 1960, where you could get on a jet and fly five hours across the country. It was just not even thought of. It was, it was amazing. And yet it cost $400 for a flight in those days, in those dollars. Right. So in those dollars in 1960, when it cost a $1,800 for a home in 1960, it cost $400 to go on a plane across the country one way. And, and today, you can get on Spirit or other airlines, Frontier, and for 50, 60 bucks, if you don't bring baggage, you can fly one way across the country. So everything, there's an old saying, there's always someone out there willing to make less money. So people can scale up these technologies over time and create business models that generate revenue. Um, they're going to do that. And I'll give an example of what, what I think these space planes could provide in the future. I could see folks getting on the space plane and going at Mach 5 to, Dub to Dubai in two hours. Or people from Dubai coming to Vegas and gambling and going to our spaceport and gambling here and going back in the same day, right? Or the next day. But it's going to bring the world closer together for cargo for human transportation. It's going to have applications here on Earth, not just in space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, and it's interesting, even when you say the 6,500, it's like, you know, to a lot of women, that's like, you know, a tummy tuck and a oh. nose job. I mean, you just give those <laughs> up, you can go up to the edge of space. <laughs> right, or, or the price of a nice handbag, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well, I, I think, you know, it's always exciting to see the evolution of Las Vegas and to see a consumer space travel, you know, be part of the vision 
of what Las Vegas is over the next decade and beyond is also an exciting thing. So, Rob, we're going to stay in touch as uh, you have more announcements and, and more developments along the way. Yeah, and we'll put a link to your website in our show notes, everyone. I'm sure everyone listening is is interested to learn more, and I know you've got a lot of information and content on there. Thanks for spending the time with us, Rob. Thank you so much. I had a great time. Thanks for your help. Some really interesting information there. And if you're listening to the audio podcast, be sure to go to our Vegas Revealed YouTube channel and check out the video podcast because we have some animations uh, to show you what Spaceport Las Vegas uh, will look like. Also, some video of going up in one of those jets that Rob was talking about where you go to the edge of space. And the video really is spectacular. Yeah. All right, let's do some tips now. Dana, my tip is going to start with a gripe, a (laughs) grievance, and then turn into a tip, all right? So uh, Shane, my husband and I, we met some friends to go to a movie uh, downtown uh, in the Fremont Street area. Uh, We parked, read the parking sign that you have to pay to park along the street until 6 p.m. So we went to the little machine, paid for parking, went to the movie, All good. We came out, decided that we were going to go grab a bite to eat right around the corner afterwards. Right. So there happened to be a parking spot right in front of the restaurant that we were going to. So we pulled in. I was like, oh, this is great. You know, parking, paid parking ended at six. So we're good to go. Well, not the case, because as we were sitting there having dinner, I see a parking attendant through the window putting a ticket on my windshield. Oh, no. So I was like, what the hell? I would run over there and stop them. Oh, my God. I was I was about to, <laughs> but we had warm food sitting on the table. I was like, eh, the food's more important. Uh, so my tip, okay. make sure that you read the parking signs on every street in downtown Las Vegas because parking policies are different from street to street. City of Las Vegas, I've got words for you, (laughs) but I'm not going to say them here. I think that's dumb, Uh, dumb, dumb, dumb. On top of it, when they give you the envelope to pay your your parking ticket, you send your money to Los Angeles. so weird. The hell is up with that? I can't believe you're going to pay for that Uh, ticket. I would have ran right over there and been like, I didn't know. The other street said 6 p.m. That's unfair. It seems like common sense to read the signs, but do it because all the signs are different. Yeah, that does make it difficult. That really does. It's complicated down there. They do make it, and even like paying for parking is complicated. You got to go to the machine, put in your license. Now, I don't always even remember my license plate number. I've always got to look it up on my phone if I don't see it. Like I remember most of the letters, but in numbers, but so anyway, it's, it's a process. I know there's like an app available and stuff, but if you don't regularly go downtown, like, you know, every single week, right. you don't have the app. So anyway, that's a good tip. Check the signs. You don't <sighs> want to get a ticket like Sean did. No, you okay? don't. Well, let's get into the Christmas cheer then okay, and perfect. make things happier. <laughs> um, the Westgate just unveiled this new Christmas suite. And again, if you're watching the video podcast, you're going to see some pictures. And we'll also put them on our social media and some video. Uh, this is a new Christmas suite at the Westgate that's going to be available year round. So this is not just a one-time short-term thing. You can go celebrate Christmas and cozy up at the fireplace with Christmas decor all around you in July. August, September, whenever you want to go, um, it's available for booking. You do have to call the Westgate. You can't do it right online to book this suite. But they just say, you know what? People love Christmas. They love to celebrate it all year round. And it's just been it's been getting so much attention because it's beautiful. Yeah, we talked to the Westgate about this whole idea of having themed suites. And they said that uh, this Christmas suite is not going to be the only one. In the coming months, they expect to announce even more themed suites coming on that will be a a permanent thing. Mm -hmm. And they actually came up with the themes through um, like a contest with their employees. They said, what what kind of suites do you think would be great themes? And then all the employees voted on it. So that's like a cool thing too. Good interaction there. 
really cool. So I think it's a great idea and good for them coming up with different... I don't remember this ever happening at another hotel casino. If I'm wrong, you can correct me. I know they have done Christmas-themed suites during the holidays. Right. I think the resorts, resorts World did one in partnership, possibly even with Hallmark, um, last year. So, yeah. But uh, anyway, it's a great idea. Again, you have to call and book and check out our video podcast and social if you want to see some pictures or some video of the Christmas suite. Hey, thanks to all our subscribers. We just appreciate you so much and we say subscribers basically we have a group of people that every month they donate to the show um, and they help us you know take more time to put things together and and has helped us to create the video podcast we've got also a big new sponsor coming up that we'll announce in our next podcast that we're excited about and don't forget we do have an amazon shop where uh we've curated a list of of goodies, items that are perfect for a trip to Las Vegas. Also, Dana and I have put together a list of things that we use mm -hmm. on a regular basis that we really love. Um, and we have a list of, of things for you to check out there to begin your shopping experience. So just click on the link down in our show notes. We've got good stuff down there. Yeah, and the roll-up shoes that make it a little bit easier for you to travel or um, if you're going somewhere and you're wearing heels, you want to take the heels off at the end of the night and put on a cute pair of shoes. We did get uh, two orders this week, so yeah. we're thankful. Thank you so much to Casey for ordering. Um, we appreciate everyone so much for ordering those. We get a small commission. Because we love the product, we went to them and said, give us a link. So... That's that. And next week's going to be Podcast 180, Sean. It is. And we'll be back with lots more Vegas news, info, and tips. Have a good week. Bye.